Sabi, uh, who is coming to us from Beirut. And he's the founder of Beirut AI, he has a very uh, long history and experience in working with building AI, essentially. He was teaching uh, computer vision and image processing at our work at Moscow that was going on, and is going on still at the American University of Armenia. And he's going to talk about uh, how to build an AI community. Now, the talk might be a little short, uh, but we'll leave time for uh, more of questions and answers. So, we go. Yes. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Okay. Thank you for coming. Uh, this topic is very important to me. And uh, as you may have noticed, it's not going to be a technical presentation. This is just going to be me telling you my story, uh, what I have been doing in the last couple of years, and basically what I learned from all of the activities that I have been doing. Uh, so for those who don't know me, my name is Christophe Zabri. I studied software engineering in uh, university. After graduating, I worked uh, for a couple of years uh, as a mobile developer. And then um, I decided to quit and um, work on startup with a couple of friends. Can you guys hear me in the back? Or no. I? OK, I'm sorry. I will raise my voice. <laughs> so okay. I, I have a background in software engineering. I, after studying and graduating from university, I worked uh, for a couple of years as a software engineer. And then uh, I quit my job. And I was working uh, with a couple of friends on a startup. And this is where I got introduced to machine learning, computer vision, and this whole world of AI. And uh, I completely fell in love with this. I, I liked it so much. And just like anyone who falls in love, they want to tell everyone about it. They want to share it with the whole world. So this is exactly what happened with me. I wanted to see who else is working with machine learning in Lebanon, who else is doing this uh, like cool project. So uh, I started organizing some meetups, some events. And basically, this has led to uh, Beirut AI, which is why uh, I'm standing here and telling you my story. Uh, also, I'm the founder of uh, Zaka, uh, an AI company with the aim of uh, developing the AI sector in Lebanon and uh, in the region. So, uh, let's just start by defining a bit what a community is. So, what do you guys think a community is? What is the definition of a community? Does anyone have a group of people are working for the common goal, maybe? Yeah, it's actually a group of people that share a common interest. So, uh, it's a group of people that share a common interest. And uh, we've all been part of uh, different communities, and throughout our lives, we always uh, step into and out, out of communities. So, for example, uh, our family can be a community, uh, our workplace is another community, uh, maybe our neighborhood is also a community. And this uh, data science summer school is also a community that uh, around a certain uh, uh, essence or the goal of the community, which is data science. Uh, and so it's very important for us humans to belong to a certain community because we are social creatures. We like to share experiences. We like to, uh, when we're happy, we like to share it with friends. When we're sad, we like to have some friends around. So it's important for us to have this sense of belonging to a certain community. And the same thing can be applied in the technical world and in the technology world. So you can see a lot of uh, communities built around a certain technology or a certain uh, maybe software uh, language or whatever. So this is the kind of technology that I will be talking about today. Uh, not Sorry, it's the kind of community I will be talking about today. Um, so this is the one of the first uh, meetups that I uh, organized in Lebanon. It was not for Beirut AI, it was actually for another community called Papers We Love. So this was a community for uh, computer science geeks that like to read and discuss computer science uh, papers. So obviously, there's not, not a lot of these people. So you can see like six were attending at this, uh, this meetup. So, uh, but I learned a lot from organizing uh, events such as these. This is uh, another picture. This is the first AI um, event I organized. It was for Le uh, Lebanon AI Meetup group that I also hosted. Uh, it was an intro to deep learning. And so you can see there's a bit more people attending, but still not a huge number. So um, basically, shortly after this, uh, this event, I was traveling to Amsterdam. So I was trying to see if there are some AI or machine learning meetups happening there. So I could visit and have a look. 
So uh, while researching, I found out about Amsterdam AI, and from them I found out about City AI, which is this huge community of AI hubs around the world. And so I decided that this is something that my community needs, that I can do the same thing in Beirut, try to group AI people together, try to get some people excited about this field, and hopefully maybe try to put Lebanon and Beirut on the global map. So uh, as soon as I returned from this trip, I started organizing uh, events and growing this community. And I'm very proud to say that after a bit less than two years, we have, been, we have a great community in Lebanon, but Beirut AI is the applied AI community. Uh, as you can see, we're organizing events for more than six people, so we have some more people are interested in our events. And uh, the, what I like about it is it's not just a technical community for technical people, it's also basically for anyone who wants to learn about AI and basically apply AI. So uh, our mission is to enable everyone to understand and apply artificial intelligence. And so for that reason, we do multiple types of events. We have technical events for technical people who want to basically code and learn how to apply the AI part. And sorry, we have non-technical events for anyone who just wants to learn what AI is and how it's being applied in different uh, industries. Um, like I said, uh, we're part of City AI, which is a global uh, community. And uh, this community has more than um, 60, I guess this is a bit outdated actually, it's with more than 80 cities around the world. So this number is growing uh, every month and a lot of people are also joining and start doing this uh, more AI activities. So, um, so today I'll tell you, I try to summarize basically everything I've learned in two years into 10 steps or 10 points that you should keep in mind if you want to start, uh, build the community and it, grow it and maintain it. Uh, so let's start. The first one is, you need to find your essence. You need to start by, by looking at your ecosystem and see what's missing in the ecosystem. What is the need? What, what's something that people basically have a need for that's not being fulfilled? Uh, don't look at the ecosystem and, for example, see another community that's already growing and do the same thing. This is definitely will not work. If there's a community that you like uh, to be part of, join this community and help them grow and scale. But if you think this community is missing something, then this is your need, this is your essence. So try to find something that can complement the other part and not compete with the other people. And once you identify this need, now you have to figure out how to fulfill this need. So who are your target audience? Are they technical people? Are they basically anyone working in this field? Are they people who don't know the technology? What is the right format of events that you need to organize? Because this also depends on the need itself and on the uh, um, uh, on the need itself and on the target audience. So start by defining the essence or the need that you need to solve, and then start by figuring out who's the target audience and how do you want to reach this audience. So the, the easiest part about uh, building a community is that you don't have to do it alone. So uh, there's a great African proverb that I really like. It says, if you want to go fast go alone, but if you want to go far, go together. Um, this is very important in my opinion, because if you want to build a community, you want to build something that lasts, that, that goes forever. So um, it's very important to build something that can last. So you need to find partners that you like to work with. You need to find people that are as excited about this as you are, people that want to drive uh, have the same mission, have the same goal, and want to help you build and build this community. Um, these people need to have um, uh, basically the same vision, so you can motivate them when they're feeling down, and then they can motivate you when you're feeling tired and feeling down. And it's not any thing, by the way, it's very frustrating to find the right people that can work with you and that can help you uh, grow this community. But the good, good thing is that it's an ongoing process, so you never have to build a team, and then this is the team that will be with you forever. You will start basically small, you will start with a couple of people. As the community is growing, the team will also grow. So don't be afraid to give people chances to let people come in, come out, and test the, which one are good fit for you, for your team, for the rest of the team. And eventually, you will find a team that can basically help you uh, and complement each other. So 
the first step is um, it's great that you figured out what's missing and maybe you were able also to convince a couple of people to join you and help you build this. But it's very important to take it to the next step and actually take an action. Um, so this is the first step you need to do is basically act on this need and then just think about it. And uh, you might find this a bit weird and like it's obvious, but actually it's not. So from my experience of setting up communities, this is where a lot of people fail because um, it's very easy to, again, like define a need and then maybe get some people excited as well. Yeah, let's do this. But then start organizing the first event, for example. And for some reason, you find that after three or four months, you're still figuring out what's the best format. And I want to make a good first impression. I want to have a good first meetup. Like, this has happened with me so many times. Uh, I had a lot of people within City AI to set up their, their uh, ecosystem to start a new chapter. So uh, basically, after we set everything, we onboard the city, we find a team. And then after some months, like, they still don't know what to do. They're still figuring out what's the best uh, format. And I want to wait. I want to make sure my, my first event is great. And uh, eventually, their momentum dies. Their, their excitement goes away as well. And then you find that nothing happened. So a lot of potential communities end, uh, die before they have a chance to, to be exposed to people. So that's why I always say, just, just like any other project, it might be hard to take the first step, but after you just take a step, everything will be clear, it will make sense, and you can uh, start building from there. So like it says, start small, do a small event, even if the first event only attracted 10, 15 people, that's a great way to start, learn from this, and then move on and grow it. So, um, so after you decide on your first meetup and you start organizing things, it's time to let everyone know about this community, about this meetup. So that's why you need to reach out to these people. Because after all, it's not a community if there are no people. If you're doing events for two or three people, then that's not a community. So you always need to find the right platform, the right channel to reach out to your audience and connect with them. And this is not something that you can, that you will do only once for your first meetup. This is something that's constantly, you're always doing it, you're always reaching out to new people, you're always growing your community, you're always finding ways to uh, get more people involved and make your community uh, accessible to more people. So uh, one way of doing this is, for example, in sending out newsletters, so updates about what you're doing, uh, upcoming events. Something we recently started at Beirut AI uh, is, uh, is called Monthly Recap. So at the end of every month, we send uh, like a blog post that summarizes everything we did during this month and a bit of the upcoming events. So this helps uh, people stay up to date with what's happening because maybe not everyone can attend every event and we do a lot of events per month. So it, it's a way to people to keep track of what we're doing, to keep up with our updates and to also feel that they're part of the community. So that's very important. Uh, you can do it throughout any channel you prefer. You might be using Facebook, you might be using LinkedIn, you might be just sending uh, emails or whatever. It's up to you, it's up to your community, but it's always nice to connect with people. Um, so throughout your journey, you meet a lot of people that come to your community from different backgrounds that have uh, different ideas and different visions for what they want to do. So for me, I, I see each person as they have a story to tell, they have something new to add to the community. And it's very important to not to be closed on this, in fact, to be very open, because you shouldn't assume that your members are all the same and all, they all should have the same background. Uh, it's, it's very good to have a diversity in this community because having diversity ensures that your community uh, lasts long and uh, is strong to whatever problems it might face. So you always, you always remember that you're building a community for the community, not for yourself. So always be inclusive, always accept everyone, always try to add, to get new people and to add diversity. <coughs> yeah, so uh, this is a bit counterproductive and a lot of people might uh, disagree with me. I know my wife disagrees with me on this, mm -hmm. but I really believe that you should be a yes person, especially if you're starting something new. So always say yes to any opportunity, because every time you say yes to an opportunity, you, you don't know where this might lead your community to. So um, it, it's a lot of hard work, it's a lot of uh, time spent maybe, and uh, that you would rather do something else with it. 
but I think it's very important to get it out there. For example, uh, I get a lot of people ask me to go give presentations or do some talks or give workshops uh, to whatever uh, companies or uh, groups or NGOs or some stuff. And it's a lot of time that, that I waste, but I also I love it because it's a chance for me to tell people about my community, about my mission, about what I'm trying to do. So it's, this is me connecting to new people and broadening the, the, the reach of my community. So uh, it might be time wasted, but I think it's very uh, important to have it. So be a yes person. Uh, always make sure that you're listening to your audience, because the community is not you and your team. The community is everyone who attends your events, everyone who follows you on, on social media. So make sure that you're listening to them, that you're listening to their needs, and that you're giving them value. Because otherwise, they will stop coming, and it doesn't mean, doesn't mean anything to be a part of a community that doesn't help you learn and grow. So um, you should always get the feedback of people, like you see if you're doing something wrong, if, you're, if you might be doing something better, how you can improve. Uh, so one easy way to do this is to send a feedback form after every event. Uh, this is something we've always been doing. Uh, something else that I like to do personally is after every event, I like to chat with the attendees, with the people, ask them what did they like about the event, what did that, what they did not like, how can you make it better. Uh, so one big example is uh, when we first started doing events in Beirut AI, uh, we, were, we were not doing technical events. So a lot of people asked us to, hey, I want to learn how to apply this. This is interesting. This is awesome. But how can I apply it? So then we started doing technical workshops. And they've been really successful to a point where now we're trying to replicate the same thing all over City AI and different cities are trying to take the same workshops that we did and try to do them like, uh, on their, in their cities. But at first, like when I started doing things, I thought that there's a lot of online courses, online content. People don't need me to basically... That's what I thought. But then I realized that it's actually people still prefer to go bring their laptop, go to a, to a classroom, sit with other people in front of an instructor and have this one-on-one -on -one interaction. And so basically, if I had not listened to my community, then I would still be doing things that no one cares about. So always reassess your values, your direction, and always think that, am I doing whatever is good for the community, or I'm doing whatever I think is good for the community? <coughs> yeah, so, um, this is, I can't stress this enough, but you should always try to make mistakes. Because if you're not making mistakes, then you're not doing anything new. And if you're not doing anything new, then you're stuck in your comfort zone. And we all know what happens in the comfort zones. Nothing grows in the comfort zone. So you need to be growing your community. You need to be taking chances, making mistakes, and of course, learning from these mistakes. Um, so you need to step out. Make, try to innovate, try to find new ways to deliver the same message, to engage with your people, and to give them, basically, uh, value. Uh, so, for example, tomorrow we're trying something new uh, in Beirut AI. So for the first time ever, we're doing our, uh, an online event. So I have no idea if this will work or not. This is something that we want to try. And um, so I'm not even going to be in Beirut to do this, but I guess that's the point of having online events. So uh, you can join from anywhere in the world, and if this is a successful event, we will be sure to make more events online. We can engage more people, we can basically don't have to be in Beirut or to drive to our location to be part of our events. Anyone can join from wherever. So, uh, so yeah, let's hope it's not a mistake. Let's hope people enjoy. So what event is it? It's uh, just an introduction to AI. It's a presentation event. Uh, we're doing it. We always talk small because if you want to make a mistake, it's better to have a small mistake. It's in English. It's going to be in English. Yeah, it's in English. It's in English. It's uh, on Zoom. Uh, you can just connect to, uh, to the workshop and just listen. It's an intro to AI. It's like a one-hour introduction. Uh, this is the same uh, presentation we gave. Uh, so this year we also started something called uh, the University Ambassador Program. Because, like I was saying, uh, we listen to our uh, audience and basically we realized that a lot of people who are attending our technical workshops, they used to be they are university students, and a lot of them can't make it to the location where we do our workshops because some of them maybe live far or don't have transportation. So then we realized that why don't we go to their campus and do the similar events on campus so it's easier for them to be part of, uh, of, the, of the events. 
And so we created this program where we have uh, we recruited one volunteer in every university, and their job is to help us organize events uh, on campus. And so this year we went to around 15 or 16 university, and it also helped us to basically bring our mission to more people and grow our community and have more people uh, accessible. So that's another example of how we basically listen to people, what they're asking, and we give them um, what they want. Um, yeah, so I really wanted to make this uh, a 10 points, not 11 points, so I put these two together, but I guess uh, I guess they also go, go very well together. So work hard and be passionate, and uh, this is might look like so trivial. I think this is, these are the two most underrated uh, concepts that you ever hear because everyone knows that you have to be passionate and you have to work hard but I don't think anyone really knows what it means to work hard uh, so working hard is like spending all your week and doing things you don't like to do but you have to do them because there's an event uh, coming up <laughs> or uh, working hard is like I can't find a graphic designer to make a poster so I learn it myself so I'm proud to say that I'm, I can use Photoshop and Illustrator now and soon I'll be able to use After Effects after that because I always find problem uh, finding uh, graphic design, so uh, I do it myself, which is not something I'm always proud of, but I mean, you have to do what you have to do. So uh, it's very hard to start something when there's nothing, so it's a lot of effort at first, and if you're a small team, the task might look very big, so you need to push and keep pushing, and maybe with time, this ball that you're pushing will start getting momentum, and at the same time, your team, the team that you're working with will grow and will help you push even more, and eventually, you will reach a point where it's, everything becomes easier. But at first, you really have to work hard. And uh, working hard alone is not enough, I think. You also have to be passionate, which is, I think, it's a bit obvious, but still, uh, because if you're not passionate, you can do any of the points that I just described. So you can't really find a need that that you need to fulfill. You can't convince other people to help you build and grow on this need. You can't connect to other people and reach out. You can't uh, be a yes person and say yes to every opportunity. You can do any of the things that you mentioned if you're not really passionate about this. So um, I believe that if you have hardworking, passionate members of, of, you, of the early team, this is, this is what makes or breaks a community uh, because there's a certain threshold that you need to reach uh, we call it critical mass or whatever. So if you don't reach this like level of sustainability, I think this is where communities end, die eventually after some time. It happened with me with my previous <coughs> communities. For example, papers were out, I mentioned earlier. So you need to work, work hard a lot, a lot until you reach this point where the community is so big and the team is so successful at pushing everything that it just keeps rolling and it's so easy to do things. So, uh, so yeah, be, work hard and be passionate. And uh, what do you think the last point is? Consistency? No, it's actually, it's the most important one. It's uh, have fun. Because after all, why are we doing this if it's not for fun? We're not making money off of this. No one's forcing us to do this. Then if we're not enjoying ourselves, what's the point of everything? So I really believe that having a community should be a place where you can connect to other people, learn and grow, but at the same time, have fun while you do this. <coughs> uh, so, these are a quick summary the 10 points. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this talk, and uh, I thought it was very short, but I mean, I cannot stretch it more than this. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really hope it inspired you to maybe create your own community or be part of a community and help it grow further. And thank you so much for your time. If you have any questions or would like to discuss that one, yes. Would you share with us some examples of the diversity of people you have in the different communities? Uh, yes. So, for example, um, the, okay. So we have so in Beirut we have a lot of uh, when we first started doing events, a lot of people came like from the area that we started like uh, around Beirut, but then we realized that there's a huge potential and there's a town called Tripoli, I'm not sure if you, if you know about it, it's, a, it's like a, a bit two hour drive from Beirut or maybe less, and you realize that there's a lot of people uh, there that, that would like to attend but they're also a bit far from them. And so we 
we went once, we tried to do events there and event there, and uh, now we're preparing to do more events outside of Beirut to try to reach the people that aren't only like our own ecosystem, we want to reach people that have different backgrounds from basically different areas with different cultures. So uh, this is one way of trying to, uh, to be inclusive. Another way is, I don't have a specific example, but like uh, we never say no to any opportunity of maybe joining forces with another uh, community and co collaborating together. <clears throat> so this actually, I think, uh, adds diversity to our community. Um, so, so you have people who create AI, programs, coders, etc. And you have people who really know nothing about AI and want to learn? Yes. Okay. Yes. So for example, uh, like last month we went to an opportunity fair that was hosted at AUB, American University of Beirut, and there were uh, this program that they, they take uh, Syrian refugees and uh, underprivileged kids and they give them uh, two months uh, digital training and uh, soft skills and English training and stuff like that. So. Uh, this was the graduation party and they wanted us to be part of the people that expose these people to opportunities like for example internships or whatever. And so I went there and uh, I, when the people started coming and asking me, okay, what are you? What is AI? What do you do? So I'm like, yeah, we're the Applied AI community. And they're like, okay, what is AI? I was so shocked because for me, like everyone at least knows what AI is. But then I discovered that actually no, I'm living in this bubble. Like, Everyone that I know knows what AI is, even if they don't know how to apply it, but they know what the concept of what I, artificial intelligence is. So these people haven't heard of the concept even. So now we're, we're working on going to all this region to have at least one, uh, one day where we just introduce them to the idea of AI. That there's something called AI, you should know about it, that's it. So um, that's one example. And I always like, Sometimes you get so far on with your work that you forget to, to take a step out and see like the whole picture and what everyone else uh, is doing and what's their background. So, yeah, that's... Uh, Thank you. Sure. I'm sorry, what do you mean by seeing you in the bubble? Uh, I mean, like, I mean, I work with people and I have friends and I have my close community and usually I don't have any, for example, Syrian refugees friends for some reason, so I don't know people from outside of my bubble, what they what they are doing, what their background. I mean, I assume that everyone that at least uh, went to a certain software uh, development uh, class should know what AI is, like at least should have heard of the term artificial intelligence. So I was shocked to hear that they don't know what artificial intelligence is. Some of them knew, by the way, it's not like everyone didn't know, but more than 50% did not know artificial intelligence. So this was a bit shocking to me. That I explain the bubble concept. Could you go back one slide, please? Yeah. Because I missed the beginning. Okay. Uh, so, first you have to find the need that you need to fulfill in the community. So, what are you trying to do? What is, what's your community doing? If it's doing the same thing as someone else, then don't waste your time. Just go help them out and build this. Don't compete because it doesn't make sense. Uh, after you find your essence and your like your need, you need to figure out how to fulfill this need. So, who are your target audience? Uh, how you reach them? What's the format of the events you need to do? After this, basically, you need to try to find a team, people that can help you kick off this because it's a, it's a, it's a lot of hard work. So, if you can find people that can help you, that would be great. And these people can, should be like share the same uh, goals as you, share the same vision, and are ex as excited as, uh, to this as you are. Uh, and then, once you find these two, take action. Don't just fail. I mean, do anything. Just do the first event, put it out there, try to get people to attend, try to tell people about this community and push it as much as you can. So basically, these are the first three, four points. Uh, which point did you... No, no, that's fine. Thanks a lot. Sure. Yeah, so, a couple of questions. Yeah. You said you have several events per month. So yeah. how much time are you spending on this voluntary work? A lot, more than I should. <laughs> and second, AI is so diverse. Yeah. So do you have events geared towards different uh, specifics of AI or everybody attends? I mean, mm. what, what, what are the example topics for example? Yeah. So the first, started, uh, the first type of events we started doing were 
gold quarterly meetups. So every quarter, every three months, we bring local people from the community, uh, either startups, or companies, or maybe from university. People who have been working with any form of AI, because AI is so broad, so they can be doing computer vision detection on something, or using an LP to build some, anything, anything that falls under AI. Uh, we, we bring these two to three speakers, and everyone, each one gives 20 minute presentation about one project they worked on, what they learned, what tools they used, how did they approach this. It's not too technical, it's for everyone, yeah. and there are free events, so that's one format. Another one is technical workshops. So these are three hour uh, workshops where students or technical people bring their laptops and come and every time we pick a new uh, topic or a new problem and we work on it together. So we've done computer vision, we've done NLP, we've done time series analysis, we've done basic uh, Python intro to TensorFlow, uh, we've done market basket analysis, we've done recommendation system. Uh, what else? I feel kind of like we try to do everything because some people prefer this topic or they want to learn this one, so we want to cater for everyone's needs. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's another one. We've done once a discussion panel because we were at an event and it happened to have a, a discussion between people and the audience liked it, so they asked, "Hey, why don't we have a discussion panel?" So we did a discussion panel. Last time, people, a lot of people told us they want to work with hardware, so we're working now on a future uh, workshop that will involve deploying your AI models on hardware. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you also know about this. Um, also, like for the next year, we're planning on doing workshops, but for non-technical people. So a lot of people, let's say, let's say you work in marketing and you want to see what AI can do for you. Mm -hmm. So we want to organize workshops, not just lectures, mm -hmm. on how you as a marketing person can benefit from AI. Also, let's say finance or uh, business or graphic design or anything. So this is future plans to, to try to get everyone involved. It sounds like a full-time job. It is actually full-time job. It doesn't pay. <laughs> but uh, also, like, I try to manage as much as possible. So what's your relationship with the, sorry, yeah. what's your relationship with the industry? Uh, how is it? How is the industry participating in the? Um, I mean the private institute companies and so on. So there's a the, the idea in Lebanon is for some reason people like to work in silos. So uh, if you're working, on, let's say you have a company and you're doing some stuff with AI, it's very rare that you would share this with people. Uh, like I recently discovered, uh, I met a person at an AI conference outside of Beirut. He was from Lebanon and he worked at a company that owns multiple restaurants and I recently learned that they've been doing some stuff with data for the past three years and uh, I mean it was super exciting but at the same time I told him why haven't you been talking about this? Why haven't you been attending events or sharing this try to engage with the community? And so it's a bit like everyone's doing their thing and they try to close up on it instead of open it up. Uh, so that's kind of the experience I have with some people. Uh, otherwise, like, there's not a lot of people doing AI things, so this is why we're also trying to push uh, uh, this education. So right now, uh, we have this AI bootcamp next month in August, which is also something we're trying for the first time. So let's hope it works, but we, we got a lot of interest and a lot of people, companies, they want to participate, they want to send their employees, they want them to, to learn this. So hopefully, like in the coming years, we'll see some uh, collaboration and some more AI projects coming out of this uh, ecosystem. Do you have a question? Uh, the first 20, 25 uh, people who start to attend your uh, events, do they have similar characteristics? For example, they were software engineers, they were, or they were divers? It was uh, diverse actually, uh, but, but more like 60% technical people, maybe a bit more, but there were some people who aren't uh, technical, but they just hear about AI and they want to know what AI is. And everyone uh, falls under this. Uh, okay, and those 40%, did they continue attending the... Uh, yes, I mean, I don't have exactly the number of people that keep coming back, but uh, we did definitely have people that are part of the community, that show up on every event, that uh, attend everything, and uh, I don't know exactly the percentage. But yeah, I mean, some people attend for the first time and then never show up. Some people think AI is whatever they think AI is, so they attend and they say, oh, this is not what I thought it would be, so they just leave. Uh, like, we have technical workshops where we literally said, bring your laptops, that's it, it's going to be involved coding, and then I get people coming, hey, I'm a graphic designer, I don't have my laptop, I just want to know what AI is. 
<laughs> so they just sit and then five minutes later they feel, okay, this is too boring and they just leave. Uh, I mean, you always have, uh, you can't please everyone, but uh, I think you've been successful enough to, to get some momentum going and grow the community a bit. Yeah. yeah, I'm interested, uh, who are your speakers? Are they in industry talk leaders or the, uh, it's more like lectures or? Uh, so, no, not really uh, like industry case leaders. studies or based on their experience from their companies, like they are on the top positions or who are? Uh, so, yeah, exactly, not really top positions, but they have experience with AI, they've built something mm -hmm. with it. So, it's very diverse, so, like, for example, uh, one time we brought, uh, there's a professor at uh, Michigan University, he's, Lebanese guy, he's a Lebanese guy, mm -hmm. he's living in the US, he's, he's working there and he was visiting Lebanon. At the same time we had a, a, an event, so he came, he gave his speech. It was very interesting because this guy is like the kind of a leader and he does work a lot of these things. But other times you just find any startup that are doing some, some things and they usually not like uh, pretending to, 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 to be doing things, they are actually doing some stuff. So they get literally experience of how they did this, how they implemented the uh, can be something not super uh, advanced. Like for example, one one time we had a, a e-commerce website a company. Uh, they have an e-commerce website and they built a recommendation system. Uh, so they just shared their experiences. They had zero experience in AI, but they just read about it online and tried to figure out some things and they built something. So it's not ideal, but I mean, the point is is not to give uh, the knowledge. This is this was not a technical event. It was a a quarterly meetup, so it's about to showcase what AI can do for different things. So, if let's say you're working on an e-commerce website, you can know that how can you benefit from AI. You can basically build a recommendation system, or just to get people excited about it. So it's very diverse. We have people very extremely advanced, and people that just start getting started and they work on a project and they want to share it. Uh, these 10 steps can, can be used for building uh, other communities, yes? For, for yeah, the Python yeah. community or digital marketing yeah. community, but uh, which one uh, would you uh, segregate for AI, for building AI com community? I mean, it's, it's uh, which kind of the same thing. The, the only difference I see is AI is, uh, has a lot of hype nowadays, so it's not hard to get 100 people to attend an AI event. It's hard to make them attend again and again and keep coming. But I mean, I'm, I don't brag about doing an event and getting a lot of people to attend one time at least because, like I said, everyone wants to know what this AI is. There's a huge hype around it. So the difficult part is basically keep keep them coming, keep them keep it, giving them value so that they feel yeah, I'm, I'm benefiting from this. Sometimes you don't have free events; you have paid events. So if you're paying at least one dollar and it's not something that you're benefiting from, you will not come again. So the fact that every time we make, let's say, a paid event, it's always uh, fully booked, it's always people that want to come. I think this is uh, a proof that we're giving some value at least to these people. So maybe if you want to focus only on the AI part and not just anything else, I say uh, maybe the reach out and connect, like always, I don't know, that's, it's not in here, but I mean, make sure that you give value to, it, to, this, uh, to your community. I mean, there's a lot of points that uh, I can say a million things, but I mean, I try to summarize them in like steps how to start and how to keep it going. Uh, can you tell more about this CPAI network and how how do you benefit from it? Yeah, <coughs> so CPAI is a, uh, like I said, it's a network of uh, different city hubs like Beirut AI. You have uh, I don't know Paris AI. Uh, all over Europe, we have in Asia, everywhere. And so um, we benefit by being connected to this huge network, by sharing experiences, by sharing ideas. Uh, so every month we have a, we call it a global ambassador hangout. So it's an, it's an online one hour hangout session where hopefully everyone joins. Sometimes not everyone will, is able to join, but it's just people joining, sharing their experiences. Hey, I'm doing this thing in Beirut, for example. Oh, that's a nice idea. I would like to replicate this in my own city. How can we collaborate, for example? So uh, it's just connecting to other people and sharing ideas. Um, that's mainly the, the, the most beneficial thing for me. And uh, sometimes I say if you're organizing an event and you need speakers, uh, you can get people that are working in this field from different countries to come as speakers or as instructors or however you, you'd like. 
uh, sometimes there's opportunities. Uh, so <coughs> let's say someone is looking for someone with this type of skill. So it's like being connected to this global people that are stakeholders in AI in some form. And not all of them are technical people. So we have ambassadors who, again, like they're business people, marketing or product managers or whatever, but they're interested about AI, so they try to build some activities around this. And for example, if someone will open Yerevan AI, uh, uh, how, how it can be uh, become the member of this service? I mean, if you can, I can uh, help you. Like I said, I do this with a lot of people. So we can set up the uh, onboarding process, create the basically the website, the connection, and everything else. But I, you have to do the part two, three, and whatever. <laughs> so this is it. So I've done this to many cities, uh, and they, they start at part two, at number two. So they, they get some people to work with, they get everything, and then nothing happens. So I was uh, like ping them, hey guys, what's up? When's the next event? They always come up with an alibi of, yeah, I'm just waiting because I'm doing this, so I'm not busy now, I'm a bit busy, so maybe in the future, maybe in the next coming month. And so eventually, I've done this with a city, <laughs> which I'm not going to name, but it's been like uh, less than a year, and they still haven't done anything. So technically, they have a, a branch there, but it's not really active. So it's, it's very easy to be part of City AI and have your name on the website, but it's not easy to be active and to start doing things. So that's a big difference, yeah. Could you give us the URL or link to this larger yes. hub? City.ai. If you want, I'll go back to Beirut. Yeah, so it's uh, city.ai. That's the website for City AI. And then uh, you can, from there, browse all of the different cities and uh, um, check what, uh, I don't know, branches you have or something. And now uh, I'd like to say also one thing. So we started doing these projects and within City AI, so uh, different uh, cities are collaborating on, let's say, initiatives or projects. Uh, one project that I'm currently working on or maybe leading is the education initiative, because, like I said, we were the first, one of the first people that started doing technical workshops, and everyone else uh, basically liked the idea and wanted to do the same. So now we're cur curating. Uh, uh, workshops, materials, and boot camps, and uh, training instructors to be CCTA AI certified so they can give these workshops in their cities. Uh, and we're also working on some collaboration uh, that I can't say it yet because it's not uh, finalized, but basically we're working on bringing AI education to everywhere, all over the world, through this network of uh, CCTA AI hubs. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Who is the organizer of CPA? Who is uh, uh, so they have two co-founders. Uh, one of them is named Stuff, like uh, but without an A, like my name, and the other is called Mike. Uh, I can send you their names if you're interested. But is that an organization or they are just an individual stuff? No, it's an organization. It's an NGO registered in the Netherlands. Uh, yeah, it's an organization. And are they uh, <coughs> affiliated to some universities, institutions, no, no. just no. just by themselves? One of them is works at the VC. The other uh, works at IBM. Uh, also, like uh, the VC branch of IBM, so they work with a lot of startups. They they, they are connected a lot, uh, and they are also the co-founders for the World Summit AI. It's, uh, I'm not sure if you heard of it. It's the AI conference that happens every year in Amsterdam, the World Summit AI. So, Society AI is also part of the organizing team. So, uh, yeah. So what do you think is their interest in growing this ecosystem? Are they trying to find new startups? Or uh, what's I mean, not really, but they're, they're trying to basically connect everything and try to, uh, like, the slogan is the uh, enable everyone to apply AI. This is City AI's slogan. So they want to help everyone be involved and democratize AI. Because you know probably that there's a lot of people that are doing a lot of things in AI, but some other places all over the world that don't have access to the same resources and knowledge. So they try to democratize this by building these uh, decentralized uh, hubs and everyone is connected through this. So we share resources, we share knowledge, we share stuff. So it's easier to, uh, everyone should have a chance to be part of this. Yeah. Have you had experience in any of your gatherings of people participating who are skeptical of the use of AI? Um, yes, but mm, not much. I mean, sometimes I hear people saying uh, some negative things like, you know, like AI can, uh, I don't know, it can be used for the 
for the good uh, or for the for the bad or whatever. Uh, I mean, yeah, we, some people share this. And I always tell them that, uh, like for me, I think AI is technology, just like any other technology, and it's about how you use this technology that basically affects people. So I'm not saying that AI cannot be used for bad, but I mean, it's, it's the people who are bad, not the technology that is bad. Uh, that's my opinion. Thank you. What do you think? Well, I, I, I guess ideally I would hope that the conversation would go deeper to, to play out some scenarios on how it constrains experience or our conduct or um, intrudes on privacy and what are ways of um, addressing those challenges. Yeah, I, I agree. It's not something that you can discuss in two minutes. It's definitely a huge discussion. Um, so Do those happen, those deeper conversations? <clears throat> um, not really. One time we had a discussion panel event, <coughs> sorry, but it was focused more on how uh, our ecosystem in Lebanon can benefit from AI and how we can try to re reproduce the same uh, environment setting as, for example, uh, other places. So what do we need to be able to compete with, for example, not Silicon Valley, but like other cities that are doing some, some things like what's missing, what, do we do, what, we don't, what, what don't we have that we need to work on to create so that we can get people, uh, like create more projects project and more people excited. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, do you organize some sessions or events at schools? Um, not yet, but uh, that's also, so next year we have two goals. One of them, like I said, is to try to reach out to non-technical people and have workshops for them. The other thing is to go to schools and have content for school, uh, for school kids. So we also need to reach to, but I mean, we're a limited team and we're also working on a volunteer basis. So all of us have jobs or the university and we we'll do this on free, uh, on our free time. So you can imagine that it takes a lot of time to prepare some things and so, yeah, we were a bit slow, but hopefully next year we'll grow a bit more and try to reach the schools as well. Do you know about Coder Dojo? No. That's about uh, learning, teaching coding to children. Okay. Yeah. There can be something like that, teaching AI to children for free. Yeah, so there's a lot of um, initiatives in Lebanon that teaches uh, coding to either school kids or universities or basically anyone. And uh, we always try not to compete with them because that's not the point. So we need to complement them. So all of our uh, courses or workshops require basic coding skills. Uh, so that's why that we don't teach you coding, you know how to code, but we teach you Python for data science, for example, if you don't know Python, and we teach you everything else that you need to, to know. Uh, so going to the school kids, obviously, yeah, we will need to teach them uh, not coding, but everything uh, after that. I will check this. Uh, what are the criteria of getting uh, through the workshops? Like, do you need a technical background? Yeah, the technical workshops are technical, so you need to know basic programming, that's it. Mm -hmm. And some linear algebra. No, not, nothing too advanced, because we all, so all of our workshops have been introductory workshops, because everyone in the community is still uh, like a beginner and no one knows a lot, so I really wanted to do some advanced things, but I mean, no one would show up. So at least we, we said let's this year focus on introductory workshops, and then hopefully by next year, enough people will have the basic level so they can start attending uh, a bit more advanced things. Uh, and now I think we also, if tomorrow's uh, event went well, we're hoping to do some online workshops as well, so you can uh, film them, put them, put them on YouTube, and then if you're not, let's say if you're a beginner, we tell you, go go ahead, watch this uh, workshop, follow the code or whatever, and then if you pass this, you can attend this more advanced workshop. So it's a way to uh, raise the level of the community. Mm -hmm. Technical skills. Thank you. As a person outside of the AI community, let me ask a naive question. What are the uh, main uh, sectors or domains of AI application? Because AI's value comes when it's applied somewhere, right? Like IT, I would assume. So in Lebanon and in the world, what are the main, let's say, e-commerce you mentioned earlier, healthcare maybe, or whatever, customer care? Uh, so I, in Lebanon, I think 
uh, most of it is either um, uh, so uh, recommendation system is one thing that uh, use another one because it's the easiest uh, in my opinion I think it's easy and we have a lot of uh, e-commerce websites and a lot of people doing these things and uh, the second thing is insurance uh, I know a lot of insurance companies because remember you have to have a lot of data and usually huge companies uh, like insurance companies have a lot of data and can uh, can uh, uh, can invest in the like have the, the means to invest in a project and like an AI because when you're doing an AI project it's not like a couple of weeks and then you see results it's a bit of a long term investment so you need to be able to like six months to start seeing some results and uh, I think everyone can afford to do this but huge companies in Lebanon can that's my experience uh, in the world I think it's uh, really diverse I mean you have a lot of computer vision applications and stuff that are happening, we have a lot of NLP things. Uh, by the way, Chatbot is another uh, application in Lebanon that uh, uses a bit of NLP. Um, what else? Do you know something? Okay, thanks. Uh, what are your long-term goals with the Beirut AI? Uh, it's to have Beirut the hub the AI hub of the region. So we have a lot of people that know how to implement and work with data science or AI projects. I, I really want people to stay in Lebanon, not to leave, to find jobs. So a lot of smart people, if, if, you, if you're, let's say, smart and you want to work with the data science or AI, there's no opportunities in Lebanon now. So you really have to leave. Uh, so uh, I really want them to have opportunities. I want companies to start using AI, creating opportunities, and so we can keep uh, smart people in Lebanon and give them opportunities. And I think that there's also a huge outsourcing opportunity as well. So if there's enough, not enough companies that can hire people, it's always fine because if you have the talent, you can always work with remote companies. This is something I've been doing for the past four years. I've been working as a freelancer uh, or a consultant on my own based on this technology because I couldn't find Lebanese companies that are looking for uh, data scientists or whatever. So I had to look abroad and I did not want to leave Lebanon as well. So I was like, let's try to see and it worked so well. A lot of companies, uh, it's much easier for them and cheaper to hire, let's say, someone uh, from Lebanon or from this area instead of, uh, uh, you know, it's a lot of taxes there and stuff like that. So, so that's also part of the long term to try to boost a bit the ecosystem. And second, uh, do you have sponsors like because I assume you have some expenditures that you don't pay. Yeah, uh, we don't have sponsors, so we're, I try to make it uh, sustainable. So, so we have, like I said, we have paid events. So our workshops are uh, $15 per person, which covers the cost of the pizza, and we get something a bit left for uh, for the community, for sustaining the community. Uh, so I try to charge as little as possible to basically give a good. Uh, experience and as well keep something for, for the community. Uh, I'm trying to look for sponsors, but it's a, it's a lot of hard work and I'd much rather work focus on the community itself because sometimes uh, a sponsor comes with its own demand and its own things and I don't want to really like change, I want to keep the values of the community intact, so if, if, if it doesn't align with the uh, sponsor, then I don't need the sponsor, I can just make it happen. So yeah, that's the idea. Can you say pizza? Yes, pizza should it be Zata in Lebanon? <laughs> no, that's only uh, for breakfast. No, actually, like pizza is a huge, uh, popular thing in our yeah, events. Especially, it's the technical workshop, so usually coders like to eat pizza. So yeah, you can see it's actually like, attend one of our workshops. And now we are thinking about if you started doing online workshops, then how? What, what should we do with the pizza? So like one funny crazy idea was we give them coupons for free pizza or something. <laughs> But again, uh, that's the long uh, way. So, did I understand correctly? So, uh, there is more data science talent in Lebanon than jobs? No, no, no. No, not oh, yet. Or I didn't understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not yet. I, he was asking me about the long-term mm -hmm. goal. So I told him that my goal is to, or very high goal actually, mm -hmm. 
to create a community of data scientists, okay. people who can work with this technology, people who can stay in Lebanon, and who can either create startups or work at companies in this field. But I said that one, one argument you can say is that Lebanon is small, it's true, and there's not a lot of companies in Lebanon. So then, what's the, if, if all the jobs were fulfilled, then what, what about the rest of the people? So I told them, yeah, but there's another option as well, which is the outsourcing opportunity. And this has started to happen, by the way. A lot of uh, European companies have come to Lebanon and started hiring technical people in Lebanon. No one in data science yet, because there's no talent. But AI's goal is to produce talent. So uh, next month, we have our first AI bootcamp. Uh, and the idea of this bootcamp is it's going to happen like multiple times per year. and. Uh, every person that graduates from this bootcamp should be able to find a job or work in data science. And uh, one more question, probably I missed because I was late, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, is, is your uh, are your activities somehow uh, connected to universities or like, are there uh, uh, university professors who are interested in these topics or it's like completely so, industry so driven? The team of Behind Beirut AI with five people. Uh, three of us, four of us are from the university, they're from AUB, American University of Beirut, and one of them is doing a PhD, two are doing their masters, the fourth is just still uh, a bit uh, younger, but uh, so we get we are connected to some professors at the universities, but nothing like official or like part of the community, um, but we do have some connection. With them. No, I mean like uh, if, if at some point you want to get into the deeper topics in your courses or are there people from the university who can contribute or this knowledge does not exist? Yes, yes. So mm -hmm. one time we had a, an event around NLP mm -hmm. and it was specifically NLP in Arabic. Mm -hmm. And so we brought, we brought a professor from AUB who is working on NLP in Arabic. Okay. Uh, so he gave us the... Like, he's, he's a big fan of the community. He always like, encourages mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. and uh, he likes what we're doing. So we, we had some uh, interest, but like no one is fully on board and always uh, like part of the team. Yes. But, yeah, we do have some support. Okay, thank you.